One of the most fun shows every year is Sleeper Show. And that's what we're talking about today. Who are those guys at the end of the draft that are going to bring you glory? Who other people are going to be like, who's that? And you're going to be like, blah, blah, superstar fantasy option. That's who that is. They help you win fantasy championships. Take a look at our personal picks on today's episode and make sure, like this video, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and enjoy the show. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Manscaped. Manscaped has just taken off not only in the USA, but Canada, UK, Europe, Australia, South Africa. They are everywhere. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, the best men's grooming brand and products available. And right now at manscaped.com, you can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20. That's 20% off plus free shipping with code FOOTBALLERS20. Hi, this is Eric Dixon, NFL Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, August 25th, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway here in the throngs of fantasy football draft the, the season. The throngs? throngs. throngs. In the got, throngs. You got the R That's in the there. song, the Cisco song. No, throng. throng. The throng, throng, throng. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. It's a good one. What's so controversial about that? Uh, I guess nothing, Mike. <laughs> Uh, we're right in the thongs of the fantasy football draft season. Oh, that's gross. You, uh, I, today's show, <laughs> it's my fault. Look, man, it's not your fault. It's my look, fault. You try to be the train and I try to be the penny on the tracks. <laughs> I just, we've I, established this. Broadening our vocabulary is just not wise. It just, opens was that up your word of the day? Throng word of the day throng. I don't know where that would have come from. But we're not going to examine it, Mike, because there's too much to talk about. And we're already in it. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we had a trade take place. I woke up and, and saw the news that there was a significant trade that will impact fantasy drafters. Yes. And this is why, <laughs> look, if you've already drafted, this is not meant for shame, but it's meant as evidence of why you wait as long as you can because things transpire over the course of the preseason. We're talking about two things today, a major trade and a season-long, season-ending injury. Oh, man, I forgot. And both of those things vastly impact your yeah. drafts. I mean, Jason, we, we've been doing a slow draft for our family league, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you drafted a player that's not going to play this year. That is right, but at least he cost me my fifth-round pick, um, and that was, that was awesome. This is why... <laughs> We have, like, you know, for the Megalobowl that uh, everyone is welcome to, to join us and play in at Megalobowl.com. The drafts are the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th of September. The kickoff is the 9th. So yeah. wait as long as you can for your drafts. Um, it's just it's just hard because I, we all as soon as we get to August, it's like, oh, I want a draft. I want it to be now. And I'm always one, like, pushing for it earlier selfishly but then regretting it because it's dumb our league of record draft is sunday night so that is the 29th and so that's when we'll be doing that one and holding our breaths for the final well the nice thing is there is games. no more preseason you know it's it's one of those things where this year if you're unaware you have the three preseason games and then it's kind of a week off. They they right. have an extra week after the final preseason game before the kickoff. So if you're in that last week, you should be good from an injury standpoint. Obviously, people could get injured at practice. Less common. We have sleepers on the show today. Each of us have selected a couple of names to bring forth. All of our consensus sleepers are in the Ultimate Draft Kit, which you can see at ultimatedraftkit.com. If you are unaware or you are cramming for your draft, the UDK comes with access to the UDK app. And with the app, you can mark players as drafted. You can mark players as uh, stay away or, or your favorites. And you can utilize that tool, the rankings in there, and the, and the drafting tool to really be a nice accompaniment. 
to yeah, your I, draft day experience. I personally use the blue circle. Um, oh, what does that mean for you? That means sleeper. That Those are the guys oh. that are later in the draft that maybe in the rankings they're not that, that high because, you know, those are stat – projection rankings and their projections are that they aren't going to have a full season as the starter and and break out but the guys lower in the list lower in ADP that I don't want to forget about I want to swing for the fences want to take a shot on a guy I use the blue mark in the app for those players all right let's get into some buy sell buy or sell presented by pristine auction Buy or sell, Robbie Anderson will lead the Carolina wide receivers in receptions for 2021. He had 95 receptions last year, and you have essentially Robbie Anderson, Terrace Marshall Jr., and DJ Moore. I believe it was very intentional here to put in Carolina wide receivers. As, right, not Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey had more receptions uh, the previous two full seasons. He was up over 100 in both of them and would have been my answer. But I'll, I'm going to buy this. I mean, I think Robbie Anderson plays this role in the offense, and if you wanted a pat on the butt to the fact that they're committed to him in the possession role, it, it would be the three-year. They, thre they the did it three 20 million times. Yeah, I mean, they, they just signed him to a contract extension yesterday. So while I do believe this will be a DJ Moore breakout season, I don't believe that means he'll surpass him in total uh, total receptions. DJ Moore is very much the Mike Evans to the possession Godwin sort of dynamic, in my opinion. Yeah, so I mean, I'll that, buy. It. I'll buy it. That's that's how I have it statted out as well. When it when it comes to the wide receivers, you've got you know a rookie really dominating the slot role, and uh, I, I'm not going to go and say Terrace Marshall is going to lead this team uh, with these other two wide receivers and. DJ Moore, while he very well, I mean, he's being drafted first. He will probably have the most fantasy points on the roster. He is my number one fantasy option. It doesn't come via the most receptions on the team. The way that they used Robbie Anderson last year, I think, is the way they want to continue to use him as more of a possession guy. Um, so, yeah, I, I I mean, we all know my love for Robbie Anderson. I do have him leading this team in receptions. Yeah, he's he feels very safe at this point of uh... – just look what he did last year. Maybe he maybe he uh, gets some more touchdown variance going his direction, which based off the amount of receptions and yards, he, he really should. But he, he feels like a very safe PPR type of a fantasy player. I want to be clear because I think Jason thinks I don't like Robbie Anderson. But I had him on my roster last year for the entirety of the season, and I just experienced what – high reception, low touchdowns was like for Robbie. I would comp him to, he's the Carolina Deontay Johnson, and they have a worse quarterback than Big Ben. Okay, yeah, that's fair. And so I think that um, the odds of the touchdowns going through the roof aren't high, but he's a great receiver. And you don't catch, you know, you talk about targets being a skill-based metric. He had 136 targets last year in this offense, and then they – said, well, we're going to reward you for that and build you as a fundamental element in moving the football. So um, we're all buying that. Yeah, this was an easy one. Oh, man. I love Robbie Anderson. That was by yourself. Whoa, 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 Pump the brakes, Jason. Oh, yes, I mean, uh, You're Robbie Anderson is... I know somebody what? who loves him. <laughs> He's whatever. Uh, I know a guy who knows a guy. Take him or leave him. I think, I mean... You've come through some of the final deaths to Jason. I mean, Clyde looks like he's going to start the year, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. CD inevitably will come off the COVID list. And COVID is gr is great <laughs> for CD. Like him being on the COVID list, all that does is it keeps him safe from injury. Because oh, I, I love CD Lamb. This is I had no idea where that was COVID, going. COVID is great was the quote we all got. Yeah. Well, I, I, I continued it for what I'm saying. I'm saying he can't get injured on the football field while there he's was on a the hitch COVID in that giddy up, reserve though. list. Um, and so that's what I tell you what I love about COVID. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious. Uh, <laughs> you're shaking your head. I, I'm shaking my head because uh, that wasn't what I was saying. I know, but you know, sometimes you point at the certain things a certain way and we're just, we're just on guard. We're just protecting you. Are you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're protecting you from, we're using you as protection from us. 
I am a good meat shield. I am. Uh, I will say that. If I mean, you're in a war, <laughs> grab my. If you can lift me, uh, I will stop those bullets. I, to be fair, our producers and Kyle all went on red alert when that sentence began. So we'll just try to be more patient and um, let you walk your way through. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. Use the code Ballers to get a ten dollar credit. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. So yesterday morning, we knew that Travis Etienne was undergoing tests on his foot. Uh, the word list Frank came up, but we didn't know the implications for the severity of the injury. We did know. We know that's a curse word in fantasy football. Yes. Yes. Uh, or as one of our developers calls it, the Lisa Frank injury. Yes. And Lisa Frank is a mean woman to these <laughs> football players. Uh, so Tra Travis Etienne did end up <sighs> probably about an hour or two after the show came out. Put on the injured reserve. He's going to undergo surgery. He is done for the season. His rookie year is over before it started. The ultimate draft kit has been updated. All of our adjustments to James Robinson and Carlos Hyde have, have been made as well. James Robinson ended up for me at running back 21, Jason RB 20, Mike RB 24. And I received no fewer than four separate offers for James Robinson in our dynasty league yesterday. Mind you, this is a player I attempted to trade the entire summer with only mockery, but this is, I mean, I, this is part of it. I don't blame people for that because things changed. Now he's a viable player in fantasy. However, I think we are lower on him than a lot of people in the fantasy space. The reaction has been essentially one of ETN's gone equal sign last year's James Robinson. And last year's James Robinson was a uh, top five running back in fantasy football, a phenomenal asset, and he looked great on the field. But I think what's important to realize is that the, the method in which his fantasy points came on the Jaguars' number one, you know, worst team in the league was due to opportunity. He had all of it, his rushing market share, his snap percentage uh, for the running back room was through the roof. And you have mm -hmm. to ask yourself, is it going to be the same this year? And the question or the difference here is Carlos Hyde, which I could see people saying, look, I'm not and afraid. Meyer. I'm not afraid of, of Carlos Hyde at all. It's going to be James Robinson taking it all again. Um, but I, I think Carlos Hyde will be certainly more involved than the running back two last year for the Jaguars, which was nobody. There were seven times last season that James Robinson was a top 12 running back. He had weeks of number two, number three, number three, number five, number five on a week. Some might argue that, you know, seven touchdowns was a low number for 300 opportunities in Jacksonville on an offense that just couldn't get down to the goal line. So where opportunities might be lacking this year or reduced, positive regression in the touchdown totals could come could come and bring that, you know, stabilize his value. Yeah, do, that's, do you think that's going to happen? I, I, I'm very concerned. Like he's still yes, the 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 fantasy value of James Robinson has gone up. And he is if you got him in the wherever he was going in the 6th or the 7th round, that is now looking like a a solid value. He'll probably jump into the 4th round, maybe 4th or 5th round. But my biggest concern is Urban Meyer and this and this coaching staff. They were willing to use a first round pick on a running back, which is bad football process to me. For a team that's rebuilding from the ground up to say, "Well, yeah, this is what we're going to spend our pick on our our really high value first round pick." That's already a bad decision to me. And just they were going to use all three guys. They had said we're going to do it, and so I think that Carlos Hyde is on the field. Far more than if you're rushing out, you know, per, you know, proclaiming, oh, James Robinson, back to what he was last year. I think that's uh, – you're going to be sorely mistaken. And and to, to illustrate, to give actual data for us saying, oh, they used him a ton and they didn't use other running backs. I want to illustrate how true yes. that was. Here are the running back percentage opportunities for James Robinson last year by week. 
89 percent 85 100 percent 87 100 percent 100 percent 96 percent 100 100 100 90 100 and if you're like well yeah maybe he's just that good here's dalvin cook's numbers right. who is the clear leader of you know he's a workhorse back uh 67 78 73 percent, 77 percent, 44 like yeah exactly th those yeah. are workhorse numbers not hundreds and nineties. So the, the the message here is that I think we've ranked him appropriately. He is still very valuable. He is certainly a steal at the draft price he had been at. Yes, correct. Um, and I think we're all comfortable if you slot him in as an RB two if mm -hmm. need yes. be, but probably not expect last year's James Robinson. Yeah, uh, he's running back nineteen for me. He was twenty. Uh, he. Oh, I know why. Yeah, yeah. Someone else right. fell behind. Let's him. talk Let's... about another first-round running back gone awry. Well, uh, be, do you guys want to talk? Uh, go ahead. Sorry, I no. Uh, you. More Jacksonville or what? No, no, no. I was, I was getting ahead of myself. I was thinking okay. that we were talking about this trade already. Okay. Well, go I was, ahead. I was in the throngs of the James Robinson area. It's tough to see when you're in the throngs. Yes. <laughs> Clouds your vision. Oh boy. Throngs um, everywhere. I'm sorry again. Uh, the Rams acquired running back Sonny Michelle from the Patriots on Wednesday for two draft picks. Fifth rounder, sixth rounder this year that converts to a fourth rounder if the Rams get a compensatory pick. So there's fallout here. We said all offseason that something's going to happen in that backfield. Darrell Henderson has not proven himself to be durable enough for them to go into a season in which I believe and they believe they can win a title. So Daryl and Xavier wasn't going to be enough for them. They go out, they pursue Sonny Michel, who's had a fine preseason, very pedestrian runner at this point, but certainly an upgrade over Xavier Jones in the backfield, more experience and can be utilized in this offense, which is a, it's a good running offense. It's a good scheme. So very interesting. Um, I was reminding people on Twitter this morning that both Sony Michelle and Rashad Penny were drafted ahead of Nicholas Chubb. Yes. Um, Which at the time, I mean, Nick Chubb had was okay, but he, just a year or before that, he had a devastating injury. It's hard to blame. You know, you look back and you say, yeah. "Wow, that's a that's a fun fact." But at the time, Rashad Penny, I mean, he's dealt with injuries, and then Sony Michelle won them. Most Patriots fans are fine with it because. He helped them win a Super Bowl, and that exchange yep. is good enough. But fantasy fallout here. Daryl Henderson had been up at 16 for me. This is going to siphon a significant amount of carries from him. I still have him as the carry leader, uh, but I do have Sony getting over 130 carries alongside him. So a downgrade for Daryl Henderson fans. Yeah, I mean, it, it's clear that the Rams don't believe that Daryl Henderson can – carry the massive workload that they hoped a running back could carry that's why they went out and got cam Akers in the first place spending their draft capital right. and then uh they waited until you know they're like we're gonna protect him we're gonna keep him good and then he hurt his thumb again and had to leave practice and they were worried if if Henderson was gonna be ready week one and so they knew they needed to get another player but this takes a lot of the um, upside away from Henderson. Uh, Henderson should still be the primary fantasy option for this good offense. So he's certainly not dead. He's a very low. He's a low end RB two for me. I I have him behind James Robinson now. Um, that's why James Robinson went from twenty to nineteen. Gotcha. Um, but Sony is Sony is capable, and he will siphon a lot of a lot of carries away from Daryl Henderson. Um, I had Daryl Henderson up in the 270 carry range. Um, That's a lot. That was a ton, and I think you're going to see Sony come in here and carry the ball 150 times, and I that's going to come at the expense of Daryl Henderson. I am concerned about goal line. Mar uh, Malcolm Brown last year, if you remember the way the season started, a lot mm -hmm. of Daryl Henderson excitement or hope, and then the goal line went to Malcolm Brown, so that you got some evidence that they want to – Use a couple of backs, Mike. Is that how you see it? Yeah, it, I I still like Henderson, but uh, I have my concerns. That I, I've seen, you know, Twitter out there of like, if you like, we weren't worried about Sony Michelle on the Patriots. Should you be worried about him on the Rams? And I think, yeah, they went <laughs> they went out and they got him. Yes, the the draft pick compensation is is not egregious, but 
they still said these two backups on our team, that's not it. We want a veteran in here who who can help stabilize the running back room. And they went out and they got Sony Michelle. The a, a not just goal line concerns, but I, I it's it sounds strange to say it, but passing work. Sony Michelle had that in his production profile as a, uh, a player in college. Yes, the Patriots did not use him like that at all. They had James White. So, but does uh, does Sean McVay say, "Hey, I'm going to see what Sony can do uh, on third down. Let's see how his hands are." That that's another concern for Daryl Henderson because if he loses that aspect or some of that aspect, then you have a you have an even lower uh, lower floor here for Henderson. No breaking news. No, this one's not bad. Oh, okay. This is. I mean, Mike, hold on to something. It's mind blowing, but not um, bad. Um, I mean, you're sitting down, so that's good. Okay. Jacksonville has officially announced that number one overall pick Trevor Lawrence will start week one. We made it through. The battle is over. Oh, Gardner Minshew, I'm sorry you weren't able to beat out the number one overall draft pick from a brand new coaching staff. The highest touted number one overall draft pick since Andrew Luck, who we all knew was going to start from, I don't know, the end of last year. Now, you know, this, this is big news for Gardner himself. Yeah. Because wasn't he holding it? Yeah, the, the poops. He, he wasn't going to the bathroom. Until that probably didn't help the competition. <laughs> the constipation. I mean, imagine taking a shot in the ribs when you got to take a poo. Oh, man. He's he's really put you on. You might the, just go right then. He's put on the weight. Um, <laughs> but he's going to he's gonna have a very fibrous diet from here on out. <laughs> Real quick, Jamal Williams could end up with a lead back role for week one against the 49ers if DeAndre Swift is sidelined or limited due to the groin injury. So uh, for further status... <laughs> <laughs> updates groinindex.com is available let me ask you guys real quick because we didn't mention the Patriots side of it what are you doing with Damian Harris now uh what do you like this was an endorsement of Ramondre as a depth back for Damian Harris is okay. what it was for me so uh they chose to go with JJ Taylor in that running back room versatility on special teams right it it, it affirms that you know James White is going to have his role so I didn't move Harris Okay. Very much at all. Maybe I might have given him another ten or twenty carries. Actually. Yeah, I I did move his carry count up. He moved up a little bit in my rankings, which I think was appropriate. But I do agree with Andy that it was primarily they loved what they saw, and, and easily so from Ramondre Stevenson, who while we're not bringing his name up as a sleeper on today's episode, Ramondre Stevenson is a sleeper for the, this season. He is. Like, I, I talked about this in the pre-draft season. He was the one back that was crazy to me where it was like he looked unbelievably good mm -hmm. and super fat, just depending on which game <laughs> I was watching. Um, if he was healthy, he was blowing my mind, and it seems like he's come in and looking healthy so far. So when he looked super fat, out of curiosity, is that also correlated to he looked bad on the field? That is that is okay. what I'm saying. He looked slow and... He looked out of shape. Yes. Okay. Got it. Got it. Tomato, tomato. Uh, Ian Rappaport did say, take it for what you will, it's very clear to me that Jameis Winston is the leader in the clubhouse. That was Tuesday. We all have Winston statted as the starter as of right now. So moving forward with our best guess there. And some quick news items. Stephon Diggs is resuming practicing. That is good news. Will Fuller is running routes. Great for a wide receiver to do that. Ryan Kelly, center for the Colts, is back practicing. That's important for Jonathan Taylor and Carson Wentz. And uh, we'll leave it there. That was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper. They just released their new web app, 21 new things they updated for 2021. They've got an iPad app now, or iPad use has been optimized. And so uh, maybe move on from that old fantasy platform. Check out Sleeper. Get your league set up over there. They're already number one in Dynasty. Our sleepers are but a moment away. Ooh. But we want to thank supporters of the show, including DirecTV, because we know what you want. It's football. football. Yeah, it's football. I would and, like football, uh, please. But not, not just a game or two, right? You would no, like I more? would like all the football, please. All of the games live. But there are a lot of you out there, and this is who I'm talking to, where you can't get DirecTV where you live. Uh, but no problem, says DirecTV, because you can stream... NFL Sunday ticket on your favorite device. You do not need satellite. 
It's basically like having front row seats to every live out of market game every Sunday. You get to take it all in. NFL Sunday TV lets you follow your favorite team no matter where you live. And they've got cool features on there like shortcuts where you get replays of entire games in less than 30 minutes. They've got game mix where you can watch four games at once. So go online to NFL Sunday TV slash Sunday ready now and see if you're eligible. And here's a little pro tip for you. Use the code BALLERS2021 at checkout to save 15%. Again, to see if you are eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming package, go to nflsundayticket.tv slash sundayready and use the code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. And we want to thank FanDuel. And if you are new to FanDuel, listen up. Your day is about to get 20% better because if you start playing fantasy football this season with FanDuel, they're giving you a 20% bonus on your first deposit up to 500 smackaroos. That's a that's a big time bonus, a BTB there. All you need to do is, to claim it is make your first deposit. If you haven't uh, played FanDuel, if you haven't um, done the DFS lineups. There's so many different ways you could play. You don't have to worry about, you know, you're, uh, you drafted a guy last month and he's injured. You pick out the guys, the matchups that you like. You want to do a main slate or a single game or best ball or snake draft. You could do private contests with your friends and listen to the Fantasy Footballers DFS show. We have a DFS yeah. show specifically to help you, uh, I don't know, win? Go, yeah. go win that money. So you can experience season-long wins, Without the season-long whale, sign up today at FanDuel.com slash FFF, triple F, to claim your bonus and start playing today. That's FanDuel.com slash FFF. Age and location restrictions apply. Bonus issued as a non-withdrawable site credit that expires after 30 days. Sleepers. All right. We are into our sleepers episode, and I'm not going to go first here. We each have two names we're going to oh. bring up. I don't know how long we'll talk about each one of them. We'll, you know, play it by ear. But two names that each of us individually really like, and I guess we'll find out over the course of the episode whether we agree with one another. All right. I will jump in first, and I'm going to lead this thing off. Wide receiver Jacoby Myers for the New England Patriots. Well, I'll be darned. And I think that he should firmly be entrenched in your sleeper status. Look at what he did last year. He finished with 59 receptions for 729 yards. That's okay. But realize that Jacoby Myers wasn't really a full-time player until week seven. And at that point, once he was in there, he was the guy, and he was seeing seven-plus targets a week. That is a 30% target share in the New England Patriots offense. And the question comes down to, yeah, they added a bunch of guys. I get it. Nelson Aguilar is there. He's a big play wide receiver. John U. Smith, Hunter Henry, these guys were added. John U. is very interesting as well. But look at the history of this offense, this McDaniels offense. Maybe it wasn't just, oh, Tom Brady prefers – to throw to the slot wide receiver. You had the prolific numbers of, of Wes Welker and Julian Edelman and Danny Amendola. It's like, maybe it's that, maybe that wasn't just a Tom Brady thing. Perhaps that was the scheme. That was, it, I mean, we had so long that it was Tom Brady was the face of the New England Patriots. It was hard to, you couldn't remove him from the tendencies of the offense, but you got to see Brady and the Bruce Arians system last year and really airing it out. So Jacoby Myers is very interesting at the end of your drafts for, uh, especially in, in PPR drafts. He's already tearing it up in the preseason yet again. And I I think that he, Jacoby Myers is the new Julian Edelman, and they're hoping that Aguilar is going to be that outside deep threat presence. Well, and if you get more passing volume, if it ends up being uh, Mac Jones that takes over, sure. that could help the equation. It, but I'm saying that that passing volume, Last year, that was the bad, quote, bad Cam Newton, where he was seeing seven targets a week. That might just be – you might just say Cam Newton. That might just be Cam Newton. But you're Could right. Be. I mean, Could uh, be. week seven on, 123 target pace, 90 reception pace, and the, the evidence in eyeballs this preseason looks like Jacoby's kind of that dude. Yeah, and if Jacoby Myers was 
uh, he's had a couple, you know, or like he's been an off-season superstar before. This isn't the the first time people were excited for it, but I, I think there was actual reason to be ex- the excitement last year. It paid off. It wasn't it wasn't massive fantasy value, but again, that he wasn't scoring touchdowns. If you combine that that target share and and those and that level of receiving volume, the touchdowns will come. They won't be eight, nine, ten touchdowns, but you throw four to five receiving touchdowns on top of all those targets, and Jacoby Myers is very relevant as a wide receiver three. All right, before I hand the baton to Jason, sometimes there's some confusion on how sleepers are even defined in fantasy football. So I'll bring that up. We're really looking at players that are either drafted very late or not drafted at all, but have the potential to emerge over the course of the season. So, um, it's hard these days with with so much fantasy football knowledge out there. This isn't like ten years ago. You know, the podcasts are everywhere. There are uh, the amount of written content and and video content out there. There's a lot of coverage now for fantasy football. So the, the term sleeper it used to mean I can tell you about a player that you probably haven't heard of. That that doesn't really exist anymore. So you have to look at at. Uh, ADP and and players that are being overlooked almost. Yep, Jason, who's your first sleeper? My first sleeper is third year wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons, Russell Gage. Russell Gage is going. Russell. Russell Gage. Gage. <laughs> yes. Okay. Imagine if he was a Seahawk. Um, here's the thing with Russell Gage. Uh, he is being overlooked because Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is the reason that, I mean, Kyle Pitts is coming in here and he's replacing Julio Jones. Well, he's coming in, or, you know, oh no, right. Calvin's replacing Julio. He's replacing Calvin. I am still of the mindset that Kyle Pitts is a rookie tight end. And I'm still of the mindset that even if he has the greatest rookie tight end season that we've seen in recent history, it is not enough to get in the way of these other options, especially Russell Gage. If you look at what he did, last year their their bye week was in week 10. And then Julio kind of, he came out, he, he got injured right away, played one kind of full game, but for the most part was gone uh, during that stretch after their bye, weeks 11 through 17, which is a good chunk of time. That's seven games. And during that time in the second year, Russell Gage kind of showed that he was good. Like, he was good at football. He was on a 140 target pace, 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns. He was a solid fantasy option. This is a guy who, during that time, last year, from weeks 11 through 18, he was the wide receiver 18. He was a very relevant plug-and-play option. And now Julio is gone. And I think that the part of the reason they traded Julio is not just because of Kyle Pitts, but they're going, oh, we got Russell Gage. He's a quality wide receiver, and if you actually look at the trust that he has with Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan trusts him enough on third downs. Those are those all important. Like who do you, you know? You were bringing up Wes Welk or Julian Edelman. Those right. are like those. Oh, it's third down. You know where the ball's going. You just got to go to the trusted source. And Matt Ryan really trusted him. He was tied with Stephon Diggs last year for the fourth most third down targets in the NFL. He led the Falcons on third down targets and had the highest rate. Um, of his targets come on third down. That just, to me, shows Matt Ryan likes him. Matt Ryan trusts him. You saw the second half of last year's breakout. The opportunity is ahead of him with uh, target volume. And I, this isn't a guy where I'm telling you, oh, if things hit right, he's, he's going to be a wide receiver one. Uh, he's going to be a top guy. What I'm saying is this is a safe sleeper. This is a guy where I think you're going to you're gonna draft in a round where almost everybody in in where he's being drafted are going to end up being nothings, and he's going to be a solid flex play all season. That's what I believe about Russell Gage. All right, my first sleeper is going to be rookie quarterback Justin Fields. Oh, let's go. Uh, there is so much attention right now on, on Trey Lance, I think, because the ceiling is so evident, like the potential between the confidence of Kyle Shanahan, between the weapons that he has in San Francisco, and then the – thousand yard rushing potential of Trey Lance so a lot of the stash Trey see what happens that's what's being talked about but I want to give Justin Fields his due and I believe Coach Nagy is going to do that very soon as well 
This was the two-time Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. This is the quarterback that I, you know, although Ohio State fears are out there in the collegiate scouting, and mm -hmm. it was like, no, Justin Fields, outside of maybe Trevor Lawrence, he's the best quarterback prospect in this draft class. Then he ends up in this situation in Chicago where there's some hesitancy, but let's just look at the resume. This is a 4-4 four, four quarterback. 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Yes, 4-4-4. Four, four, four. There are only – That's how you call Pizza Hut. I mean, remember how RG3 <laughs> – I really like that. Remember how RG3 – the song's in my head now. 2 2 oh, 4 4 4 4 2, two oh, 4 4 4 4 Was that national – was that international? I yeah, I believe that was national. Like they just – that was the number they were able to get. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Pizza Hut derailed Pizza, Andy. I mean – I'm the penny. I told you. <laughs> like a bad penny, I always turn up. <laughs> we good? Yeah, all right. Go all on. Right. Uh, let me get to the boring stuff. <laughs> uh, RG3 and, and Justin Fields, they're the only quarterbacks in the last 20 years to run a sub 4-5. You know how RG3 took things over with his legs. Now, yes. Justin Fields is a pocket passer. That's what he's great at. But the wheels allow him to escape the pocket. And if you watched already in preseason, he was getting the edge. You know, mm -hmm. he escaped the pocket, and then when the play breaks down, he gets the edge, the way Kyler can get the edge, the way Russ early in his career got the edge. He reminded me so much this preseason of Russell Wilson. When I, The way he used his legs was this perfect complement to the pass and a real bonus for fantasy. And if you look since 1990, every rookie quarterback that surpassed 80 rushing attempts has not only been a fantasy force, but he has maintained a top 10 quarterback per game pace. Mm -hmm. So... I believe he'll use his legs enough when he gets the job to be a fantasy force and be a viable starter. And I've already brought up, like, the Bears fans should love me right now, which has not always been the case. But Mooney was one of my my guys. You have Allen Robinson on the other side. You have weapons in this offense. And so I think when he gets the opportunity to start, which, you know, on average, quarterbacks drafted in the top 15, they start by week three. And that includes, you know, the Mahomes and Goff who who took a while. Um, you know, last year what we had Justin Herbert started in week two. The year before, Josh Allen was a week two guy. So sacrificial lamb, Andy Dalton goes out there against the Rams in week one. We'll see what happens. But I think Justin Fields is worth a glance in fantasy football. And um, you know, he's going thirteenth round or right around there, taking a shot on him. Uh they start against the Rams, but then Depending on what happens, you got Cincinnati, Cleveland, Detroit, Las Vegas for the next four weeks. So not exactly a gauntlet for him to make a you know make his debut as an NFL quarterback. I'm completely on board with this. You know, I've, I've mentioned the strategy of at the very end of your draft when you're looking at guys of the twelfth round. I mean, these are not. Yeah, you read them <laughs> off the other day, and I didn't want any. I wanted well, to that skip, was that was last year. That was last year's. Just pointing out guys in the twelfth round. The, the hit rate is very minimal, but the hit rate of these quarterbacks, Trey Lance and Justin Fields, like the probability that they hit when they go in, it's very high to me. So, if I mean, they were starters week one, if, if, if the teams came out and said yes. they're starting week one, there's no way they're a 12th rounder. They're way higher in these drafts, and we know for a fact they are starting. The, like, they did not trade and draft these guys to sit. They just didn't. Unless, unless your name's Zach Wilson, who we know is a starter in week one. And no one cares. But it's the wheels. The wheels yeah. yes. for a rookie yes. quarterback in fantasy. If you can run, add 500, 600 yards on the ground, then as a rookie, I want you. Rookie passers, they're not always that great for fantasy. Not everyone will be Justin Herbert, is what you're saying. That is. Um, some will be Josh Rosen. Yeah. Ooh. It didn't work out. All right. Talk about Russell Gage's new quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll jump in here with my second sleeper. Yeah, I know you've heard this before, and look, wash, <laughs> rinse, repeat, <laughs> it is going to be the same argument because I believe in the player. It is Brian Edwards, wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders. Join me on this hype train because, honestly, this train can only be powered. By hype. When a, when a, <laughs> when, <laughs> that is 100% oh, true. Oh, that is the best line. Like, when a rookie wide receiver goes out and puts up 11 for 193 <laughs> and one touchdown, I can't make a compelling statistical argument 
<laughs> so I fuel the engine with Back to the Future logs of hype. But you you have to go. So this is a scenario. Look at the, remember who the player was that they drafted, and look at the scenario, which has remained mostly unchanged. Brian Edwards was a third round pick in that year of that we just had of of twenty twenty of insane rookie wide receivers. And it, had it not been so jam packed, Brian Edwards would have been a higher pick in the draft, I believe. Also in the draft process, he broke his foot, and we all know that injuries in the draft process frequently lead to you falling to a value for teams. He broke out in college under the age of 18 years old. He went in as a true freshman and was a very relevant player for South Carolina. He ended his his career as the leading receiver for South Carolina. He just beat out Alshon Jeffrey, which, to be fair to that stat, Alshon played three years. Brian Edwards played four but he's only 22 years old right now. Darren Waller is the unquestioned number one target for this team. I'm not going to make that argument that Edwards will become that. But number two is up for grabs. The fantasy community was very skeptical of Henry Ruggs being that high draft, uh, being that high in the first round. We weren't sure, like, how do you, where do you take Henry Ruggs in a in a rookie draft? He, despite him being the number one wide receiver taken that year, Henry Ruggs fell to the back of the first round in rookie drafts, and then in redraft. Last year it was, well, maybe I'll take the shot on Henry Ruggs. And that's basically where we are today. He, Henry Ruggs and very fast. I don't mind Henry Ruggs as the sleeper to, to take the job as the number two. My point is simply Brian Edwards also has a chance to be that guy. The Raiders, they're, if you look at their line in, in sports books, they're projected for about seven wins. That's one of the worst teams in the NFL. That's a lot of potential negative game scripts coming for the Raiders. They're going to have to throw. You've seen uh, John Gruden also fuels my hype train. He's, he's my co-engineer here throwing hype into, in, into the, the furnace. Derek Carr, like his, Derek Carr as well. I feel like John Gruden's mouth is open <laughs> and you're shoveling coal out of it and into the furnace, straight from his mouth to the furnace. It is a very powerful source, John Gruden's uh, tendency when, when he talks. But, yes – Gruden's hyping up Brian Edwards with re with ridiculous superlatives. I agree with that. I'm not comparing Edwards to Hall of Fame wide receivers. But Derek Carr multiple times has said Brian Edwards reminds him of Devontae Adams, at which Carr played with Adams in college. So that's why he's making that comparison. At the very end of a draft, Edwards to me has a chance to become the number two wide or number two pass catcher for the Raiders. And I just want our listeners to close their eyes for a second and get the mental picture that I have of Mike in a meadow <laughs> holding hands okay. on his right, John Gruden and on his left, Derek Cole. Knock on wood if you're with me. <laughs> and they're just springing through the meadow. Yeah. Mm. That's a nice jaunt. I, and then they all disappear. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I saw. That was the conclusion. Eventually, of the uh, metal yeah. just keeps rising, yeah. and you can no longer see us. Now, now you're underground. <laughs> um, hey, sleeper is the key word here. Yeah, right? uh, we're looking for players that do not have a consensus of adoration. Here's the thing: um, are these sleepers, because they're late, uh, they they are not going to all pan out. Um, but I think you have the highest glory opportunity here. Right, if one of these guys does pan out, that's your glory play, and sometimes that's what you go for late in your draft. Isn't there a little bit of a comp there to maybe Rugs being the Hollywood Brown comp, and then Edwards being the Rashad Bateman comp in terms of like sure physical stature yeah, and I mean, what the, they might do for the offense? And the the tight end is actually the number one on the team, but the the passing pie for the Raiders is much larger than it will be for the Ravens. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and, and Aguilar gone. I, I, the opportunity right. is there. I, I can see how it, it can happen. The videos are great from camp, but it is <laughs> it is tough based on saying, well, the situation is just like it was last year. Well, it, yes, and he was, he was very hurt last year. I mean, he got hurt right away. He tried to play through it, then they had to shut him down, and it was – so. You're a forgiving man is what we're saying. You're very kind and forgiving. Well – that's, that's, You're willing to run it back with, that's, that's with what Brian I've been told. All right, my uh, my second sleeper here was going to be Van Jefferson. I want to give him a shout out because if you're in a dynasty league, I was very upset. Mike just acquired him. I was trying to acquire him on the cheap. He is literally 
like a throw-in option. This is not someone you need to go pay up for. This is when you're working out a trade. You might need to even say what team he plays for. Van Jefferson, a second-year wide receiver for the Down Los Angeles the Rams. Um, he's he's an extra throw-in player. Josh Reynolds was fantasy relevant from time to time. This is a guy that was pretty highly drafted, surprisingly yes, so, he was. Uh, by the McVay staff. And now you lose Josh Reynolds. Uh, Everett is gone. You have a quarterback upgrade. So does the drafting of Tutu Atwell, uh, the man who is now our uh, our baseline for weight, mm -hmm. does the drafting of him and I think was he a second round pick? He was he two two was also a very high pick. Does him being drafted high lower your uh your your faith that Van Jefferson is good even though he was drafted high? No, not not that he's good. And uh, the the rapport in camp and everything has been really really strong with Van Jefferson this year. And and what I saw in the field was was fine. Um, you know that they haven't we haven't even said his name this off season. Van Jefferson? No, Deshaun Jackson. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, so yeah. funny. Like that is another. Well, we've we've been banned from talking about Deshaun Jackson. Is there a cease, is cease and desist <laughs> yeah. in order? Yeah, like, the Bookland demanded. He's going to play in the opener, and um, I just think it's funny. It's yeah. just funny because you. What does he exact, do in week one? Oh yeah, he's going to be great. He's going to play in the opener. End of season. <laughs> All right, uh, but my but my sleeper that I'm really going to be talking about today is Marquez Callaway. Um, he, he's been all the rage. We've made jokes about how great he is from the preseason, and this isn't to overhype him, but I, I believe that if you haven't paid attention to the preseason, which a lot of players don't pay attention to preseason, you might not know who Marquez Callaway is. He's a second-year wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints. He was an undrafted guy, and this is a name you need to be familiar with because I think at the beginning of the season, he's going to be a very fantasy-relevant wide receiver. Um, the reason he was undrafted is because a lot of teams – he's a speedster. He's got, he's got lightning speed, um, and the scouting reports talked about how he was a one-trick pony, and they didn't see the speed that he has. Like, they know he clocked fast, but they didn't see it in game action. And so he dropped in drafts, was undrafted, and then thankfully goes to a really good offense, a really good uh, head coach, a really good offensive mind in uh, Sean Payton. And now if you say, well, we don't see his speed on the NFL field, t tell that to the preseason DBs that he's blowing by. They but saw it. They saw it uh, for a couple of deep touchdowns uh, this last week, but also in the short routes. He's getting involved in other places on the field. And the reality is, you know, we talk a lot about at, at um, running back. Opportunity is more important than talent. At tight end, Mr. Necessary always pops up, whether it's Logan Thomas or – Charles Clay or whoever oh, when it's oh man, Charles Clay, the yes. OG Mr. Necessary when there's just not other options to throw the ball to. Well, this is what at the beginning of the year Marquez Callaway is finding himself in. A good offense that desperately needs him. Traquan Smith still not fully healthy. Michael Thomas we know is not there for the start of the season. Adam Troutman probably won't be there for the start of the season. Like There's just not a lot of options and you've seen that in preseason. He's been hyper-targeted. Um, and you actually saw it in a game last year. There was a game where Michael Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders were out, and all of a sudden Marquez Callaway came in, and he had 10 targets, uh, 8 for 75 in that game. So coming into year two, this is a guy that I just think really has this absurd uh, opportunity. He could end up with eight, nine, ten targets for the first five or six weeks of the season, and at, at the end of your draft – you're probably burning most of the picks. We'll look back next year and say, mm -hmm. yeah, most of these guys didn't pan out. And if I can get value and then maybe even trade or move on high from him when he's popping um, or just get the value for a couple weeks in my lineup um, and then, you know, Michael Thomas comes back, I don't think he's going to be a great – uh, season-long breakout, but I certainly think he is a value right now. There are very few players at that range that can command the target market share that he should have to start the year. Well, we certainly saw the rapport with Jameis, if he's named the starter in that uh, first half of that game, and there is an opportunity right in front of him. Players <laughs> dropping like flies around him, and the thing I like about the sleeper call with him is the fact that like Traquan Smith just has never delivered. On the Drake on Smith the is, is why I was interested in Adam Troutman, or maybe a big part of that. Right. 
All right, final sleeper here, and I'm going with another rook, uh, not another rookie, but another quarterback. Tua Tungavailoa. All right. Quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. A uh, few reasons for this. First of all, if you know you play in a single quarterback league, late in drafts, you get to play around with some high upside. So if you end up going like safe late round quarterback, I'm not opposed to you waiting, like drafting Tua with your final pick and then seeing what happens in this offense this year because – this was a player, as Jason would say and his shirts would say, that was drafted to be great. This was the number five overall draft pick. Last year it was Rocky, but they did make the transition to him. And this year there's a lot that's changed in this offense, including the weapons provided around Tua. Right now if you draft him, you are you could pick Kirk Cousins. Okay, you kind of know what he is. You could pick Matt Ryan. You kind of know what he is. You could pick Big Ben. You kind of know what he is. Derek Carr, we've seen the movie before. Mm -hmm. But Tua, with command of an offense, with weapons, they invested high draft capital on Jalen Waddell. They'll have Will Fuller for week two. There's a lot of excitement there. And the, the peripherals, the pieces around him, the way they built this team through the draft, I am very encouraged by what I've seen in the preseason from Tua. Pushing the ball downfield, he had a number of... of accurate deep balls last year that were just blatantly dropped because he didn't have wide receivers that were capable of making those plays. And now you have a couple of players that are going to be interesting. I think Waddle will give him a ton of what we'd call cheap yards in the fantasy space where it's an underneath route. It's a, it's a swing pass. It's a, you know, a screen. And then all of a sudden Tua has a 44 yard reception off of it. Um, I'm just very encouraged by what I've seen on film. And, and it's not very different than, the Brian Edwards argument and the fact that I don't get to, I'm not going to look to last year's performance on the field in half a season and say, boy, that's Tua showed me everything I wanted to see on an NFL field. What I'm saying is, is that he has the talent, skill, and ability, draft capital, pieces around him to where the upside might be higher than a lot of those really late round options. So I do think we'll see an impressive season from him. Yeah, when I went back and, and re-watched all of Tua's film because I was down on him and I felt like I, I that could be a mistake, I watched it and I really did not like a lot of the passes, but I remember the ball's in the air, it's going down the field, and I kept thinking to myself, Will Fuller probably would have caught this ball. Like it, it wasn't a good enough ball, but he's throwing to nobody's last year. The weapons he has, I mean, if, if, if I threw a, a six-yard slant to Jalen Waddell, and he takes it 80 yards. I threw an 86-yard touchdown pass. Like The weapons around Tua, even if he isn't the greatest thing ever, has has high potential. Mm -hmm. uh, and you got Mike Gesicki, who's been a weapon for them as well. And the, the big thing comes down to how conservative they were last year with Chan Gailey and how much the preseason narrative, or, or actually the offseason narrative, combined with preseason, like, what you've seen on the field shows that they're going to be far less conservative. They will take advantage of all of these, um, all the speed they have on the outside. So I think he's very interesting. And so he's my second sleeper along with Justin Fields. So that is going to do it for today's episode. I was going to ask Brooks what, what's going on, but Brooks isn't here this morning. We've he got Al. Not. Just Al's running, hoot, hooting, he, a, hooting around back there. He's been running desperately back and forth, back and forth to fill in for Judge Giamatti. Um, you doing okay, Al? Yep. Expensive shoes to fill, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Expensive <laughs> shoes to fill. All right, so what do we have tomorrow? We have values and busts on tomorrow's show, I believe. All right. You, you that guys is saw, correct, you guys and I no am idea. changing my value from Daryl Henderson, who was who I was going to talk about, to someone else. All right, be sure you check out the Ultimate Draft Kit. Get prepared. Get prepared at ultimatedraftkit.com so that you can set the foundation for a great 2021 fantasy football season. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.